This video will show you the basics of S-Plan wiring in an easy to follow process. We break the wiring installation down into a step by step sequence as we explain how the S-Plan components work and fit together. So what is S-Plan? As you will see, the S-Plan heating system has two separate motorised valves that individually control the temperature of the central heating and the hot water. There is also a programmer and timer to set the on and off periods. A room thermostat is used to control the central heating temperature and a hot water thermostat will control the hot water heating. Plus, of course, a boiler of suitable capacity for the installation. And that is it. You must understand that the drawings used in this video are for teaching and guidance only. The terminal numberings and connections can vary between manufacturers and this video makes no guarantee that they are correct for the system that you are working on. Always use and follow the manufacturer's drawings and instructions for the actual boiler that you are working on and always work safely and adhere to safe isolation procedures. Always seek the assistance and guidance of a person that is competent in the installation and maintenance of these systems. If in doubt, stop and seek appropriate advice. For many of us, when we are faced with an unfamiliar wiring diagram, we might wonder what we've let ourselves in for, and the one shown here is fairly basic and simple to understand. We will break this drawing down so that you do understand, so that you are confident when looking at drawings, and so you can quickly and confidently interpret them. If you know one drawing, it is not so difficult to apply that knowledge to other drawings. What is in an S-Plan system? The previous wiring diagram can be shown in block form as a sequence of separate components. When correctly connected, they will work in a coordinated and controlled manner. We can start at the fused connection unit, the point at which electricity enters the system. We have a programmer to set the on and off periods. And the question is, has the programmer timer reached an on period? If yes, close the microswitch and pass 230 volts to the thermostats. There are separate thermostats for water and heating and again a question. Is the thermostat below the set temperature? If yes, close the microswitch and pass 230 volts to the valves. If the thermostat is demanding the boiler, the microswitch in the valve closes and passes 230 volts to the pump motor. And finally, has the pump motor got 230 volts? Yes it has, so start the pump. It is just a series of questions to which the answer to every question must be yes before the pump will start. Let's strip the system down and look at just the hot water sequence. Power enters the system at the FCU and this should be fitted with a 3 amp fuse, not 13 amps. There is a 10 way connector block and terminals 1, 2 and 3 are occupied with the line, neutral and earth from the FCU. Note that on all these drawings, I have left off the earth or CPC for clarity to make the drawing easier to follow. Please ensure that you install a CPC to all the appropriate places. The programmer is supplied with power from the connector block. If the programmer has reached an on period, it will close a microswitch and allow electricity through to the output as at point A on the drawing. This 230 volts travels to terminal number 6 on the block and then leaves again, taking the 230 volts to the water heater thermostat. If the water heater thermostat is below the set temperature, it will be closed as at point B and 230 volts will pass through the switch. The 230 volts now travels to terminal number 8, passes through the terminal and goes on to the hot water valve at C. There is already a neutral connection at the valve and the arrival of the 230 volts causes the valve to open. As the valve opens, it closes a microswitch inside the valve body. The grey wire at the valve is a permanent 230 volts taken from terminal number 1. With the switch closed, the voltage passes through to the orange wire and travels to terminal number 10. From number 10, 230 volts travels to the pump motor at D and the pump turns on. Because the valve is now open, water will flow around the hot water system. 
For the room heating, the system works in the same manner as before, with its own components and different terminal numbers where appropriate. Let's look at the individual components now, and it is important that we start with the valves. The valves will often come pre-wired with colour-coded cables where each colour is designated a specific function. You will always know what the valve wiring colours are. You can check these against the terminal numbers that you have and confirm that the drawing matches the wiring that is in front of you, because the valve wiring will not be changed. The water valve here has the brown wire connected to terminal number 8. And the valve for the room heating uses terminal number 5 for the brown wire. The other three wires use the same terminal numbers for both valves. Notice that there are two 230 volt supplies to the valve. There is a switched line to turn the valve on and this is only at 230 volts when the thermostat is closed and outputting a voltage. The grey wire is a permanent 230 volts and goes to the micro switch to turn the pump motor on. The programmer or timer is supplied with a permanent 230 volts but will only output a voltage to one or both thermostats when the timer function reaches an on period. Here we've shown the hot water timer as off so the micro switch is open and the central heating timer is on and the switch is closed. When the temperature at a thermostat falls below the set value, the micro switch will close. If there is 230 volts from the programmer at the thermostat input, the voltage will pass through to the output. Depending on which thermostat has a closed switch, voltage will pass to the relevant valve. Here, we've shown the room heating switch as closed, in other words, on and asking for heat. The output from the thermostat is connected to the switched line wire the brown wire. There is already a permanent neutral wire at the valve. If the room heating thermostat outputs 230 volts onto the brown wire, the valve will rotate and open the port for the water. As the valve rotates, it will close the micro switch inside the valve body. The micro switch has a permanent 230 volt connection on the grey wire and when the switch closes, this voltage will pass through the switch and go to the pump motor. The 230 volt output from the valve micro switch will turn the pump motor on as there is already a neutral at the motor. Water will now circulate through the open valve or valves. Some systems have an overrun facility that keeps the water circulating for a few minutes after the thermostat opens and removes the demand for heat. This is to allow the very hot heating elements in the boiler to cool slightly so that any water trapped next to the element does not boil from lack of circulation and cause damage to the boiler. It works in a similar way to the overrun for a bathroom extractor. And that is S-Plan. Hopefully you can now look at this wiring diagram and pick out the various components and the associated wiring for each of them. It is just a sequence of switches. One sequence for the hot water and another sequence for the room heating. Each has a programmer switch, a thermostat switch and a valve switch, and unless all three switches are closed at the same time, nothing will happen. The programmer switch, and the thermostat switch, and the valve switch must all be on before the pump motor will turn. Just to finish off, here are the terminal block connections and their functions as used in this video. These connections are a guide. Always check the actual wiring diagram for the system that you are working on, as every manufacturer has their own way of doing things. And if you need to extend the terminal block, it is always a good idea to keep the number sequence in order. It makes wiring up and maintenance so much easier. Work methodically, always make notes of your wiring, no one can remember where they put every wire. And if you are fault finding, start at the beginning, at the FCU, and follow the sequence through. All that we want to do is to pass 230 volts from the FCU to the valve and then to get the valve to pass 230 volts to the motor. Easy really. Practice is the key to learning and retaining knowledge. The more that you look at the wiring diagrams for the boilers that you work with and the more that you try to interpret what you see, the better you will become. Nobody learned to ride a bike at their first attempt. Keep going and good luck. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. 
and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.